<clears throat> all right, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodesh. Double honors to the, the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. All right, and uh, just um, um, so I wanted to do a lesson, you know, uh, dealing with this uh, the uh, thousand years and immortality, and um. You know, I was meditating on a few precepts. You know, I did, you know, watch a little bit of a few of the videos. I haven't really watched a lot of them. Which goes well, I watch, you know, uh, the different videos that was done by the different elders and brothers going into it. <clears throat> but um, I was meditating on a few precepts here. And so that's why I titled it Immort Immortality at a Thousand Years. Uh, let's think for a second. And when you actually, you know, think... You see that there are a lot of a uh, whole bunch of scriptures that point to and um, explain and tell us, okay, in a nutshell, that plainly, not uh, plainly, that uh, we are going to be immortal in the kingdom. All right, we are going to live forever. You know, when the kingdom of Yahweh Bashem Yahusha is instituted, that's the reason we're going to get those new bodies. That's one of the reasons we're going to get uh, changed into those new bodies. Right. So. If you um, make a claim or a statement that uh, after a thousand years, you know, we're not, you know, we're going to we're going to be translated or, you know, it's there's going to be some some halt, you know, to that. Then it's not really immortality. But you have to think, right, if that is true, then you need to you need to falsify all the other precepts that point to the opposite of that, because as we're about to go through. There's a bunch of precepts that point to us continuously living for all eternity. So if you go to one precept and say that that precept means that we're not going to live and continue for all eternity uninterrupted, right? Comas and translations and all of that. Then you need to go back and explain away all the other precepts that do say we are. Or else you would be saying that the, the scriptures contradict. And we know that the Bible does not contradict itself. And if there's any contradiction, it would be in your understanding of what is written, okay? Meaning you don't have the full understanding. So let's start off with the book of Revelation chapter 20 <clears throat> and verse 4, which says, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai. Now, when you read in the book of Matthew, the Lord told the the, uh, the apostles that they would be sitting on uh, 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And you would also have the rest of the uh, 144,000 also sitting on thrones uh, uh, as judges and rulers. Okay. And back then you had <clears throat> different uh, disciples and different men of the Lord that were beheaded. And in this time, you're also going to have that. Okay. So John saw all these things. And what else did he see? It says, and uh, <clears throat> that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai. That were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai. Um, and for the beast, oh, it's like here. And for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. So those that overcame, Revelation 15 and 2. <clears throat> and they lived and reigned with Hamashiach a thousand years. Now, the scriptures are very specific. When it says a thousand years, it doesn't. It didn't say they're going to live and reign with Yahweh Shai for only a thousand years. And it didn't say, oh, well, after a thousand years, they're going to die or get translated. It didn't say any of that. All John said was, I saw them live and reign with Yahweh Shai a thousand years. And the reason that thousand years is mentioned is because that's going to be a very crucial time period in the institution of the kingdom of heaven because during that thousand year period is where you're going to have that 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 main transition the heathens are going to be put in, in uh captivity all right and the world <clears throat> is going to be taught in the ways of yahweh bashem yahushai okay so there's going to be a lot of change right the, the proper uh institution of life is going to be getting put into the earth and that's why it's crucial. But the rain doesn't stop after a thousand years. 
we don't stop living after a thousand years. And quite frankly, if you teach that, you got to think about it. Would you really want to live for just a thousand years? You're going through all of this. You get into the kingdom and it's, it's I mean, it's just glorious and beautiful. And you want to be there for only a thousand years? You got even, yo, know, some of these things, man, you got to think about, like, would you even, why would you even want to just a thousand years? What, what type of shit is that? Nevertheless, that was Revelation 20 and 5, right? So, although it doesn't say um, in this, in the, it's like it, Revelation 20 and 4. Now, it doesn't say what exactly, in this, in this uh, chapter or in this verse, it doesn't say what happens after the thousand years. But that's okay because the scriptures say precept must be upon precept. So we're going to go to other precepts that are going to explain or give you the, the fullness of what the kingdom is going to be like. John mentions a thousand years, but but neither in this verse nor in any other scripture does it say that in the kingdom we're only going to live for a thousand years or after a thousand years we're, um, we're going to cease to be on the earth for a time period. We're going to have to go back to the spirit world. We're going to go into a coma. We're going to, there's no scripture that says that. But there are other scriptures that say this, which I'm going to get. So let's go to the book of Daniel. Um, chapter 7, right? Because it says that they lived and reigned with Hamashiach, right? So the book of Daniel, um, chapter 7, verse 14. And this is dealing with Yahawashai's reign or his rulership. And it says, and there was given him, Yahawashai, well, let's, let me actually start at verse 13. It says, I saw in the night visions and behold, one like one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven. So we know that's talking about Yahweh Shai. And, uh, and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. And uh, the ancient of days is the most high. He's the ancient of days because he has no beginning and he has no end. Now it says, and there was given him, Yahweh Shai, dominion, which is rulership, reign right a reign or a rulership authority power and it says given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people nations and languages should serve him and that's going to be in the kingdom of heaven it says his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed now, you may say, well, we're not saying the kingdom of heaven is going to go down. We're just saying that after this, you know, after this amount of time, you know, we're going to do this and do that. Well, hold on, though, because when you look up the word everlasting dominion, when you go into the uh, the word everlasting, all right, it means uh, continuing without end. Right. Uninterrupted, continuing without end. So an everlasting dominion. A dominion being that reign or rule, it's it's going to be an uninterrupted age of rulership. So if after a thousand years you have to get translated, that's an interruption. That means you can't reign continually. That means that there has to be, there's some halt. Okay, there's some halt in your rulership, which that wouldn't be an everlasting dominion. Okay, it doesn't make sense. Why would we be subject to having to go back to the spirit world or having to leave the earth after a thousand years? Yeah, how was the scriptures say the Lord, you know, gave him power and, and all these things, you know, put everything under his feet. He conquered death. But in after a thousand years, he has to go back to the spirit world. In his kingdom, he went on the cross. He suffered all those things just for that. So the next precept here is in the Apocrypha. We're going to go to the Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2. And it's going to tell you plainly. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23. And it says, For God created man to be immortal. Immortal means you don't die. And we're going to get into that. Right? It says, And made him to be an image of his own eternity. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world, and they that do hold of it, uh, of his side, do find it. So now we have to deal with the word immortal and we have to deal with death. 
Immortal is living forever, not dying. You're not mortal. You don't die. You're immortal. You cannot die, not die. So now let's look at the words life and death. What is life and what is death? Life and death it, it are two different things as opposed to existence and, and non-existence. People think that life is existence. Life is not existence because you can exist without being alive. And I know that may, that may sound uh, confusing, but when we break down the word life, you're not alive, right? Like today, they'll, they'll deal with uh, when, a, when somebody is born. They say that the person is alive because they're on the earth. They're a spirit in a body and they're dwelling in this realm on this earth. Okay, that is that that is life, the joining of the spirit and the body. And death is the opposite of life. So that's why when somebody dies or when their spirit leaves their body, they pronounce them dead. While their spirit is still in their body on the earth, they're alive. But once their spirit leaves their body, they're dead. OK, and once their spirit leaves their body, they, their spirit goes to a different it goes to the, the spirit world and they still exist, but they're not alive because they're not on the earth. Because um, certain people that have passed, right, that are in the spirit world now, are they dead? Yes. But do they still exist? Yes. So just because you're dead doesn't mean you don't exist anymore. Do they exist? Yes. Are they alive? No. Because they're not here. Okay? So when people hear life, they automatically associate it with existence. No. Life is, is, is the spirit in a body on the earth dwelling here. Death is the spirit leaving the body and going back to the spiritual body in the, in the spirit world. Okay? That's life and death. So when you say that we're going to be immortal or we cannot die, that means that we're, we're not going to... Uh, um, you know, be, have to be subject to our body deteriorating and then us having, having not willingly to depart back to the spirit world and then dwell there for, you know, three to four generations and then have to come back again on the earth and be born. Okay. As a matter of fact, let's go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter seven, verse um, one. It says, I myself also am a mortal man. What does that mean? That means that Solomon was subject to death. He had to, at some point in his life, he had to go back to the spiritual world. He didn't have a choice. So he said, I myself also am a mortal man, like to all and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. Now, when, now when you read through, he basically goes into the process of, of uh, birth, right? The process of, of how life is made, you know, the body is made and the spirit comes and, and, and dwells in it. And when you come down to verse 5, it says... For there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. For all men have one entrance into what? Into life. Okay? All men have one entrance into life. And the like going out. So what is the entrance into life? Birth. Because he just described the entrance into life. Which was a man laying with a woman putting his seed into her, forming the body, and then opening up that entrance for the spirit to come down. That is the entrance into life, birth. Okay? And the going out is death. When the body is not able to function anymore, the spirit can't dwell in it, so the spirit has to go back to the spirit world. Okay? That is the cycle of, of, the, of, of the mortal life. But... The scriptures say that man was made to be immortal, meaning that ultimately when the Lord made us, we were made to dwell on the earth or, or dwell in this realm in a body and not stay in the spiritual world continually. But what happened? As we go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 23, for God created man to be immortal. So we were, we were to live forever. We were to be able to dwell in bodies that would continually uh, stay functional for our spirit to be able to stay on the earth continually. That is immortality. So uh, if you have a thousand, whether you have a thousand year limit or a 70 year limit or a 200 year limit, that's not immortality. And it says here, um, and made him to be an image of his own eternity. 
but it says through envy of the devil, death came into the world, right? So let's go to the book of um, uh, Genesis and see Genesis chapter when this was pronounced. When you go to Genesis, the second chapter and the 17th verse, it says here, I'm going to start at 16. And the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Now remember, the man was made to be immortal. But what happened? It says, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. And we know it wasn't a literal tree. For in, for, here's the key part. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. The very day that uh, Adam partook of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, did he die that very 24 hours, so to speak? No. Because he ended up living, I believe, over 900 years. Now, Adam never lived to a thousand years. No man, no man lived to a thousand years. Why? Because this, because of this sentence that was pronounced against us. Because in that, and and this statement actually remained. How do we know that? Let's go to the book of Second Peter, chapter three, verse eight. Because you need to understand what did the Lord mean when He said, "In that, in the day that thou eatest, thou shalt surely die." The day wasn't a 24 hour period. Let's go to um, over here. Second Peter three and eight. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. So when Adam partook of that, he never he never lived to see a thousand years because in that day, that thousand year span, he died. That was what was told him. And that was, as it says, through envy of the devil, death came into the world. So we weren't able to live forever. Okay. Now, the next precept is Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. Because when you go into the book of Revelation, actually, let's go there. The book of Revelation, the second chapter, and I think I brought this out yesterday. And the seventh verse, this is what the Lord said. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So what happens when you eat the tree, when you eat of the tree of life and it's not a literal tree, but what happens when you eat of the tree of life? Let's go to Genesis to find out Genesis chapter three, verse 22. It says here. And the Lord God said, behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever you hear that so if you eat of the tree of life you're going to live forever and the lord said those that overcome he's going to give to eat of the tree of life meaning they're going to live forever so where does a thousand year uh coma <laughs> come into play because the lord is going to give us of the tree of life all right and we are going to live forever so there's not going to be an inter in, in a, a halt or interruption in that after a thousand years or after two thousand years or after three thousand years we're going to be continually living forever because uh, in the book of John it says we don't know what we're going to be like but we know that when we see Yahushai we're going to be like him. So whatever is going to happen to Yahushai is going to happen to us because our bodies are going to be fashioned like onto his body. So if Yahushai's body if uh can't live for a thousand years then ours can't live for a thousand years but we know that his body is going to live all forever that's the point <laughs> because what is death uh the wages of sin is death and and when we get those new bodies we're never going to sin and if we never sin we're never going to die so we're not going to be subject to having that death which is that departure the, that basically that uncontrollable forceful departure of the spirit and the body if you get shot in a vital organ, you can't stop yourself from dying. It's uncontrollable. You're, you're going to die. I, I don't want to die. I don't want to. But you can't help it. Your spirit is going to leave because the body, you can't dwell in it anymore. And you notice you bleed out and bleed out. And when you get to that final point, you die because your spirit is like, I can't dwell here. 
You know, what the necessary things that I need to house me, I can't. They're not here. I have to go back up. You don't cease to exist, but you exist in the spirit world and you're not in a coma. Because it, it, the scriptures clearly tell you that you had men that were in the spirit world com, uh, complaining to the Lord about how long does he not judge those that are on the earth. Or they were just hallucinating. They were having dreams. Okay, now I have one last precept here, which was uh, something that the Lord said. He told uh, Peter and, the, and uh, the rest of the apostles or the disciples in uh, Matthew chapter 19, verse 28. And this is after Peter, well, I'm going to actually start at per verse 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Yahweh said unto them, Verily, meaning truly, I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, meaning in the reincarnation. If you follow, because this was about over 2,000 years ago. So he said, those that follow me in the regeneration, that's why he told um, John in, in uh, De uh, Revelation 12 that he was going to have to come back and prophesy again before many people and kindreds and tongues and nations. And that would be because John would be following Yahweh Shai in the reincarnation, meaning John will come back. The same thing was sold to Daniel. Go, go thy way, you know, for you're going to stand in thy lot in the last days. So the Lord said, those that are following me in the regeneration, uh, continue on, continuing on, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sister, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. So now if we know that life is the joining of the spirit and the body on the earth, and then you put the word everlasting before that, which means is this, this uh, spirit that's joined to this body dwelling on the earth, you put everlasting, meaning it's going to continue that way without interruption, you have yourself an immortal life, an immortal being, an extraterrestrial being, one that can dwell on the earth without being subject to going back to the spirit world. Because what is our entrance back into the spirit world? Death. You can't go to the spirit world unless you die, you know, or you're translated, which is something that the Lord, you know, can do. But in terms of the normal cycle of man, if, if I'm here right now, I'm, I want to go to the spirit world. I can't. I can't just get just up and go, you know, the only way if you get if you if this body is not functional anymore, if you die or you commit suicide, which is also death, that is the only way in the normal quote unquote life you can go to the spirit world. So an, uh, an everlasting life, it means that you're going to be able to uh, dwell in a body on the planet Earth or, you know, whatever other planet without being subject to having to go back to the spirit world because your body's not going to be able to die. You know, you're not going to have, oh shit, yo, my, my arm fell off, you know, oh my, I got this major disease and my body couldn't fight it off and boom, you, I'm, I'm, I'm dead now. You know, like, here we go, you're perfectly fine. Nine, 999 years and 24, you know, uh, 23.99 well, hours and in the last minute, you just catch a crazy ass disease and just drop dead. That doesn't make sense. And there's no scripture that says that because all the other scriptures point to us living forever. There's a scripture that says, um, uh, all Israel shall be uh, saved world without end. Okay. So we're going to be immortal. Uh, Revelation, the 21st chapter tells you that first Corinthians, the 15th chapter tells you that. So like I said, in the beginning of the video, if you make a statement like that, you need to now go to all these other precepts that point towards us living forever. And you need to now explain how that how those precepts mean that we're really just going to live for a thousand years and then be translated. You got to You How do you explain that? OK. Oh, death, where's thy victory? You know, or, or oh, death, where's thy sting? Oh, grave, where's thy victory? What is grave? Grave is a representation of death. Because the, the earth receives your body and the spirit goes back to the father who gave it. That's in the book of Ecclesiastes. Okay, and that's the process. 
But when when we get those new bodies, we're not going to have to be uh, forcefully subject to that process anymore. OK, so it's really not that difficult of a concept. This is um, Yasharala Asa YG. Isaiah 45 and 17, the water, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. There you go. Now, there are certain things in terms of uh, specific details that we can't tell you about in the about the kingdom because it's not written. See, when when when, you know, when we say we have 100 percent truth, starting with the elders and apostles on down, it, it doesn't mean that. We just know everything that that exists in all of existence. No, it means that everything written in the book, okay, a hundred percent understanding of everything written in the book. If meaning meaning if it's written, then we understand it. Okay, it doesn't mean that well it's not written in here, so you you gotta know it anyway. No, because the scriptures say we know in part, we prophesy in part. But the part that we we know, we know it a hundred percent because it's our job. We have to. So it's not complicated. And and at the end of at the end of the day, why would you want to live for just a thousand years? You mean to tell me we doing all you mean to tell me the Lord promised all the promises and the, the, the you know the talk and the different prophets that came time and time and time again. Okay, that came time and time and time again, and we all this down the third, and all of that just for a thousand years. We're going to be in the kingdom. Oh, my gosh, this kingdom is amazing. But we, we got to check on our calendar, the, the countdown, because we know after a thousand years is over. Man, hell no, nah, man. No, 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 no. That ain't right. That ain't right. Um, that's right. This is um, Virgin Island Straight Gate. Shalom. 1 Corinthians 2 and 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Yeah, because ultimately at the end of the day, to understand, you see, you can't understand the scriptures with just brains. You know, I'm just, I'm smart. So no, understanding the Bible is not through being smart. It's a spiritual thing. You, there are certain parts in the scriptures that you need to, that's why the Lord will say, if you can receive it. Right. If you can receive it, meaning if, if the Lord has opened up your spirit to be able to receive it. OK, hey, con, you know, just one day in the sight of the Lord. Yeah, it makes no sense. OK, the Lord has been waiting. Hold up. Yahweh have been waiting 2000 years, 2000 plus years in the spirit world just so he can come and spend 1000 years here. <laughs> Boy, you know, and then, and then what? Go back into a coma? No. OK, but but hey, there, these are things that you, you hey, and you and you see what the Lord is doing is, especially the past few months, he's he's basically bringing everything out to the light. And you're seeing who's solid and who's not, because you something like, yo, something so simple, tri tripping people up, you know, and then this this here and then this here. But the Lord is doing that to to clear the path. See, the path is there, but he's 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 widening it so those that can see can see and know. All right. And those that can't see, they just get weeded out with the rest. All right. So I'm going to end it off on this precept here. Um, this is a. Uh, let me see. All right. Let me actually. All right. This is a uh, Chazak Ban Yahawada, Titus 1 and 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience and conscience is defiled. Yep. Hey, it's a scary look. If you if you take away one tiny part from the scriptures and you don't, you know, repent, it's a scary thing because Yahweh Bashim Al Shai could say, Oh yeah, you want to take that part away? I'm gonna take everything from you. But the Lord, the things don't work just overnight like that. The Lord can do that, but sometimes the Lord does it to where He takes He takes things away little by little. You know? And that main thing he takes away is that understanding. And then the little things start to trip you up. And that's a scary thing, man. Um, this is Chazak Ban Yehawada, John 6 and 44. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me uh, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. 
All right, it says, uh, verse 45, as it is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Yeah, here it is. We're going to have spiritual power, right? We're going we're gonna to be able to go to other planets. We're going to be able to do all these different things, but in after a thousand years, that's it. But but what would be the what would be the purpose of that? We die now for a reason, but in the kingdom, why would we need to die? What what are we gonna learn from that? What, what how how did we gain the victory over death? How did Yahweh Shai gain the victory over death if if we're all still gonna be subject to it? Because yeah, you could you could use the term translation, but translation is still a form of death. Because you're you're leaving the earth and you're going into the spirit world. Because, for example, um, uh, Elijah, Elijah was translated, right? And and the scriptures say that, uh, uh, I, I think it was Enoch or Elijah, one of them says they were translated, that they should not see death. At the end of the day, they're still dead. Okay? But what it means is that the, 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 the normal way that a man would die, meaning the normal way that a man would depart the spirit and the body, they didn't have to go through that because the, the uh, instead of their spirit just leaving their body, the Lord changed it. He changed their body, he translated them into a spiritual body, and then they went. Okay? So you can't find that body because it, they didn't shed it into the earth. Okay? But at the end of the day, eat. You know what I'm saying? Elijah and all of them, they, they, you know, they gone. You know, that now they came back in the reincarnation in a new body. But at the end of the day, they, they're not on the earth. They weren't alive. Why was um why was uh, Elisha so so sad? Okay? Because Elijah was considered dead. He wasn't alive anymore. He was in the spirit world. So we're not gonna die, man. Um, but I'll finish it off here. Uh this is um Yasharala Asa YG, Matthew 13 and 16. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. All right, and Brakathaya Hawaba Hashem Yahushai for that. That that he has allowed us to see a hundred percent clearly. Okay, that Lord willing, we may be of that elect. And when Yahushai comes, we may get the fullness. But the little part that we've been given now, bless Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, that we can understand it fully. And that we can see clearly and that we remain, OK, that we continue in this way, because everything that happens and everything that's happening ultimately is orchestrated by Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. So that's why we always pray that the Lord keep us, that we always pray that the Lord keeps our eyes open. All right. And he continues to deal with us in the spirit so we can continue to keep this knowledge, wisdom and understanding. But when you start to get proud and puffed up thinking it's of you, the Lord will say, okay, I'm going to pull my spirit away and let's see how much of it is actually of you. All right. So with that, I'm going to end it here. Lord willing, this was edifying unto the elect. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Until next time, Shalom.